Welcome to the Tausch Machine Translation and Moses tutorial. In this presentation, we address how to machine translate document formats beyond plain text and how to integrate the Moses decoder into translation workflows or content management systems, which is often desired for industry use. As mentioned in the presentation Moses introduction, the Moses MT system has grown over the years to provide a comprehensive package for MT experimentation and research. The quality of the Moses package has caught the attention of industry users and led to increased interest in Moses use in the commercial space, ranging from instant machine translation of published content for gisting to MT plus post editing for productivity improvements in the language industry. Therefore, in the Moses user surveys in 2011 and 2012, conducted by Taos, the translation of document formats other than plain text and the integration of Moses, especially the decoder, into larger workflows were often mentioned as highly desired features. Users would like to machine translate a whole range of different content authoring formats, ranging from Office package file formats to web content. Users of content management systems for websites often would like to integrate MT directly into the solution workflow. In the language industry, MT is often used in combination with post-editing to boost translator productivity. The language industry has specific file formats like XLIF, this is the XML localization interchange file format, that it would like to machine translate within computer-aided translation tools. As we demonstrated earlier in this tutorial, the Moses MT system is designed to translate plain text sentences. To translate different publishing and translation formats, these have to be parsed into sentences, translated using a trained Moses MT system, and integrated back into the original format. As a side note, this is even necessary for plain text, as plain text is usually also formatted into paragraphs, sections, and possibly even chapters. One way to overcome the gap between the publishing and translation formats and the plain text sentences is the combination of the open source tools Okapi Framework and Moses for Localization. The Okapi Framework is a collection of open source tools and components developed over several years, providing filters to parse many of the desired formats. The Moses for Localization component provides a way to translate the parsed sentences using Moses while preserving inline formatting and placeholders. Standard web content formats are a strong focus in Okapi and are fully supported. It also has good support for Microsoft Office and OpenOffice slash LibreOffice file formats and some desktop publishing formats with FrameMaker and PDF as notable exceptions. For the translation of software applications, Okapi supports virtually all string resource formats used in software development today, with Windows RC files as a notable absence. In terms of localization file formats, Okapi supports a wide variety of industry standard and vendor standard formats. These file formats often allow the storage of source and target texts in the same file. For simple file formats, like comma-separated tables or plain text formats, Okapi provides highly configurable filters that allow you to only extract the text that is to be machine translated. The central goal of the Okapi framework Moses for localization combination is the preservation of inline formatting and placeholders in text. Not only the preservation, but also the placement of the formatting and placeholders in the correct or almost correct location in the machine translation target text. With markup heavy text, for example HTML, this can be a major factor for post-editor productivity. If the machine translation is excellent, but formatting tags and placeholders are simply placed at the end of the translation, the post-editor will still have to insert the markup at the correct locations. Probably not the best use of time of a linguistically trained post-editor. Okapi Framework Moses for Localization currently provides two options for placing formatting and placeholders. Using the phrase alignment information from the Moses decoder, an option that is preferable for free-flowing text, or strict attention of the markup 
in place and translation of the text fragments in between, which is best for the translation of highly structured text like software UI strings. You can find a demonstration of the former using an OpenOffice writer document in the document translation and web API demo. In the future, it would be good to use word alignment information that is available using specially trained Moses MT systems for even better market placement. The larger machine translation as a service offerings like Google Translate and Bing Translator all support the translation of web pages. With the Moses web page translation contribution by Hervé saint amand similar functionality to translate web pages on the fly is available for trained Moses MT systems. This component which has to be set up on the web server, parses the text from the HTML content and translates it using one or multiple Moses MT systems that are connected through a TCP IP socket API. Depending on the required responsiveness, the distribution of the machine translation across a cluster of machines might be necessary. Now that we covered the machine translation of different document formats using Moses, I want to explain how to integrate Moses into larger workflows. The most basic integration is the library level integration of the Moses decoder into a larger application on the same machine. This can be achieved using C++ libraries that Moses provides. The slide shows which C++ header files need to be included and which libraries linked. Some users have used this to provide integration APIs into other programming languages like Java and Python, but these are not publicly available. C++ coding knowledge and an understanding of the Moses internals are certainly required for this form of integration. As Moses is licensed under the le library or lesser GNU public license, it is certainly advisable to review the requirements and implications of this license before undertaking an integration in this way. To integrate the Moses decoder in a web setting, be it on the public internet or a private internet, there are two options available. One of them is Moses Server, an XML RPC API to access the Moses decoder. XML RPC is a standard for remote procedure calls over the web which precedes the later, more well-known, but also more complicated SO protocol. Moses Server provides a simple API to retrieve the translation for a single source sentence and optionally some internal decoding information to determine how Moses arrived at this specific translation. Because XML RPC is a standard, there are libraries available for many programming languages, so one is not just limited to C++. A sample client written in Perl is available, as well as a Java servlet enabling the translation of web pages on Java-based servers. The second option for a web API is provided by the Moses for Localization project. The m API follows the REST design for web APIs, which by now is the most common design for web APIs. The sole function of the API is the translation of a single source sentence. The special feature of the API is that it accepts text with inline formatting and placeholders and places them in the translation as described earlier. Marked up text is not supported by the XML RPC API. To show where these two web APIs fit conceptually, I drew them into the document translation diagram shown earlier. The Moses Server XML RPC API is a layer just above the Moses MT system, while the Moses for Localization REST API provides higher level access that handles inline formatting in addition to the raw machine translation. The future goal of the Moses for Localization API is to also encapsulate the Okapi format handling to provide an even higher level of abstraction and functionality. This is the end of the module Document Translation and Integration Scenarios. For demonstration of the functionality, please view the Document Translation and Web API demo. For other presentations and demos in this tutorial, please go to the web address shown on this slide. Thanks for your attention.